What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. So in this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about my undergraduate years. So how I went from uh, the freshman who didn't know much about physics to the second year PhD student right now who still doesn't know much about physics, but obviously I know more, a lot more than I knew when I was an undergrad. So stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to give you some key take home messages. Now I'm going to start this video by just talking about my undergraduate years. And I'm not going to be saying how I chose to do physics. That is going to be a topic for a different video. So I'm just going to assume that, okay, I made the decision. I'm going to study physics. How did I begin doing that? So the first thing that every physics major does, if you're a freshman, you will start by taking intro physics. And that's exactly what I did. I took intro physics one, which is the mechanics class uh, that goes through motion uh, in one dimension, two dimensions, Newton's laws of motion. A constant force acceleration, you know, work and energy, what sound waves, uh, waves and oscillations, all that stuff that you learn in intro physics. And then I also took the lab portion, which included uh, the classical experiments, like measuring the uh, gravitational constant G by like looking at how things fall on an incline. And then other experiments like measuring the period of a pendulum and verifying the famous formula of how a, a pendulum's period doesn't depend on the mass of the object that's attached to the end of it. And of course, we had to learn about error analysis, which is the most tedious part about any lab is to propagate errors. So for my math class, I took Calc 1, which covers the derivative from its definition, going through product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, and then higher order derivatives. What do those mean? Concavity, stuff like that. And then finally, we learn a bit about integration and basic forms of integration. So I also took a general chemistry class, which is required for all physics majors at Wayne State. And we basically covered the uh, quantization of light, acids and bases, some thermodynamics, the usual things that you learn in your chemistry class. And I also had to take the lab portion, which I really hated because I, I really don't like working in a lab, especially a chemistry lab where you have to deal with all this equipment with beakers and pipettes and the chemicals and you have to clean them afterwards and dump the chemicals in the proper way. And all of that, I just hate it so much. But luckily I did well in that class, so it's all good. So I was also required to take a general education class, which is outside of your major. So I took sociology to cover one of the gen ed requirements. And that class was an online class, so I really didn't learn much. Uh, it's mostly because it's online. I don't like online classes at all because I usually like to go to class and engage with the material, ask the professor questions or engage in a discussion. But so that was basically it for my first semester. There wasn't really much going on. I was just, just a, a, a new fresh physics major who was, you know, taking their classes and going home, doing homework. And that was basically it. So there wasn't really anything other than that that was going on. But I also started off strong. So I did really well in all my classes. I tried to have the foundation ready so that I can advance the next semester, having everything in my mind for future years, so having the foundation laid out. So what I would do is, in addition to the lectures and the homework in my physics class, I would go to YouTube, which is my favorite platform, and I would watch lectures on physics. So for example, the MIT physics lectures or the Yale uh, intro physics lectures, I watch those because there's always some insight in them that you didn't learn in class or maybe you didn't pick up in class. So I recommend everyone to, if you're in intro physics, you're still trying to build that foundation, highly, highly recommend to go watch YouTube lectures from the MIT courses, the Yale courses, any other course you find, chances are you're going to make that foundation solid and you're going to learn a lot more than you just learn going through the class one time. So that was my first semester, which ended in December and then the winter semester started in January. And the first thing I did was I became a peer mentor for the intro physics class. And what does what that means is that now I'm the TA of the TA. So the TA is the teacher's assistant and they help the professor lead discussion sections. So I was the undergraduate who helped the grad student, which is called a peer mentor. So I was called a peer mentor. And what I did was I would go to a discussion with my TA and I would help them uh, answer student questions, uh, explain the material. And at the end of the day, what the peer mentoring helped me do was, you know, solidify this foundation of physics, keep those ideas fresh in mind so that I can apply them later on in higher level classes. So I highly recommend if you can tutor physics, if you can become a peer mentor, I would do it. I take that chance. Go ahead and take that chance. Uh, chances are it's going to help you with the material. It's going to make it stick in here. So as for the courses, naturally you take the part ones in your first semester. And then now in my second semester, I took the part twos. So 
Intro Physics 2, which was electricity and magnetism, class that everyone takes uh, after mechanics. So you deal with things that are now not very intuitive, like charges, Gauss's law, magnetic fields, how do those work with electric fields and the right hand rule and all that stuff. So it's not really the intuitive stuff. Now you're dealing, you're getting to the weeds of physics. But I think the best part about ENM is the lab. And honestly, I loved the lab so much. It was probably the best lab you can ever take as a as a, as a college student is ENM lab. Because the experiments you deal with from electricity to the magnetism part to the optics part are all just so wonderful. So for the math, I took Calc 2 now. And there we covered integration, basically, everything you need to know about integration. Uh, you learn how to integrate polynomials, how to integrate exponentials, integrate logarithms, integrating trig functions, integrating by parts, integrating using U sub, uh, integrating using partial fraction decomposition. Everything there is to know about integrals is taught in Calc 2. And then at the end of the course, you learn about sequences and series. And if you're a physics major, sequences and series are going to haunt you. They are going to pop up everywhere in your major. So make sure that you have a solid understanding of your calculus. You need to know this. So this time around, I had to take two gen ed classes. And the first one was the oral communications class, where you have to give speeches, you learn how to give speeches, things like impromptu speeches, informative speeches, stuff like that. It was, it was a nice class. You It wasn't really too heavy on the material. You just had to prepare a speech and go give it. And then on the side, you just do some homework problems. But the other gen ed class, which I really loved, was philosophy. It was intro to philosophy, so we covered the basics like epistemology, theory of knowledge, uh, metaphysics, uh, some political philosophy, some morals, ethics, and then philosophy of religion. So I really loved this course, and in fact, because of this course, I thought about doing some minor or major in philosophy. But I ended up not doing that, I ended up doing a major in math later on but you'll find out more in the next videos. So again, I started off strong. I did really well in these classes. And then I went to my academic advisor, spoke with her about what I want to do next semester and how I'm going to plan out my classes uh, in the future. And so she recommended that I take Calc 3 in the summer so that I can make room for more classes later on uh, in, in the future years. So that's what I did. Uh, in the summer, I took Calc 3, but I didn't really do anything beyond that. So. My summer in my first year, if I, if I had to give advice to my younger self, I'd say take advantage of that because I had a lot of time on me and I, I didn't really utilize that to learn something new. Now, something else that I did do was I reached out to some professors asking them about research opportunities. So I really just went head on trying to do research and two of them actually invited me to their offices and they spoke with me about the research, they went through what they do, but they uh, were expecting me to know how to code. And when they knew that I didn't actually know how to code, they said, you know, come back when you learn how to code and then we'll see how to go from there. And in fact, one of the professors actually became my undergraduate research advisor. That worked out really well for me. So just to wrap up and give you some key takeaways of what to expect in your freshman year and what you should do uh, and take advantage of in your freshman year. So here are a few tips. Number one, You'll notice that I started off taking the intro physics classes uh, and now I'm in grad school. So don't you don't have to have some advanced physics knowledge going into college. You don't have to have taken the intro physics classes. Uh, you can start fresh, start from the intro physics classes and you can make it all the way to grad school. Number two is freshman years when you have all your time. You have most of your time compared to the future years. So take advantage of that. So what that means is learn as much physics as possible, solidify that foundation. If you're in Intro Physics 1, go to YouTube, watch some lectures on Intro Physics, try to absorb everything, the textbook, the lecture, YouTube lectures, uh, the homework, you know, all of that just so you can have 100% of all the physics that you learn, because trust me, later on, when you're in the upper division classes, you wanna have that physics intuition. You wanna say, oh, I know this like that, and number three, which is a compliment to number two, is make sure you are an expert in the math that you're learning in your freshman year. So the calculus you learn basically, and then later on your linear algebra, your differential equations, and you know, your, the math is the tool. If you wanna do physics, you need the tool, and the tool is the math. So if you have the right tools, you're gonna to do a great job. But if your tools aren't working, you're gonna struggle. So make sure you have that calculus uh, all the way down. You have, you're in command of the calculus, because physics is, you know, 80% calculus. Now, if you have time in the summer, um, 
what I would recommend is to learn how to code if you don't know already. Because every physicist I know, every grad student, uh, they know how to code because they must know how to code because they use code in their research. In other words, go learn how to code. And lastly, number four is apply to REUs if you're a citizen or a permanent resident. And if you don't know what an REU is, I'll make a video about that. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Part two is coming next where I talk about my sophomore year. Uh, stay tuned and I'll see you next time.